In this video, we're going to talk about analyzing a graph using the derivative and the second derivative, which is something we haven't, haven't talked about yet, the second derivative. So to begin with, uh, I'm asking for where the curve has vertical and horizontal uh, tangents. Now I'm assuming you've already gone through and seen how to find the derivative, so I'm not going to spend time on that. Of course, we do dy dt over dx dt, and that gives us dy dx. So the derivative of y with respect to t is 8t plus 6. The derivative of x with respect, respect to t is 6t minus 7. So vertical tangents are where the derivative, I'm just going to put derivative, is undefined. So we look for where the uh, where the denominator is zero and that is at t equals seven sixths. Okay. We look for where there's a horizontal tangent. Horizontal tangents occur when the derivative is zero. That's where the numerator would be zero. So in our case that's at negative six eighths or I could reduce that to three fourths. Now I've gone back in my calculator and actually typed you know where I plugged in negative three fourths to this equation and this equation to tell you what x and y actually are. Uh, when I plug it in I get six point nine three eight for the x coordinate and I get negative 2.25 for the y coordinate. And if you look here at the graph, you know, go over 6.9 or almost 7 down 2, you can see that this is the horizontal tangent. Now, there's a couple ways to look at this. I want to just draw a parallel that I think you've you've seen before, but when we do implicit derivatives, it often comes out to be a, a fraction. You know, dy dx equals something that both that has x's and y's in it. And when we say horizontal, we say, well, we need the, the top to be zero. And that's no different here. But by saying that the top is zero, we're saying that y is not changing. And that's true. At this point, the function is not moving up or down. Y is not changing. Everywhere else, y is changing, but not right there. For that instant, y is flat x is still changing. You're still moving side to side, but you're not moving up and down. So there's some parallel you can draw here to saying, you know, how do you know something's, uh, you know, not moving up or down? It's when dy dt is zero. How do you know something's not moving side to side? It's when x, dx dt is zero. Uh, if, if I said, how do you know something's not moving at all, then both of them would have to be zero, and you'd have to look for those spots. Okay, now if I plug 7, 6, in, so I actually can uh, figure out where the vertical is. Um, and let me do that real quick. So I plug that in to the x and I get negative 4.083. It's supposed to be a 4. There we go. And I plug it in for y as well. I get 12.444. that. And again, you can see, if you go back 4 up about 12, this is where there's a vertical tangent. So it's where dx dt is 0. So if, if someone just asks you for the vertical, you would not need to figure out the entire thing. You'd just say, well, I know that's where dx dt is 0. Okay. Now one last thing I just wanted to talk about on this was a little bit of sign analysis on both dx dt and dy dt. So let me just put that right here. Let's say dx dt we know what the zero of dx dt was, that's the denominator, that was 7 6. dy dt, the zero of that, was negative 3 fourths. So let's just focus on dx dt for a second. So just the 6t minus 7. If I plug in a number less than 7 6, I get a negative. If I plug in a number bigger than 7 6, I get a positive. If I plug in a number 
into dy dt, and again, dy dt is the numerator. If I plug in a number less than negative 3 fourths, I get a negative. If I plug in a number bigger, I get a positive. So let's just mark these spots in one more time. This right here was where t was negative 3 fourths. This spot right here was where t was 7 6. Take a look at this. dy dt is negative because y is decreasing. Then dy dt is positive because y begins increasing. So we can analyze one direction at a time. We know that, oh, we're dropping in the y direction because dy dt is negative. We're going up in the y direction because dy dt is positive. With dx dt, negative because we're moving to the left. And then positive because we're moving to the right. So again, we can, uh, we can analyze vertical and horizontal motion separately. When dy dt is negative, we know the curve's going down. When dy dt is positive, we know the curve's going up. When dx dt is negative, we know the curve's moving left. When it's positive, we know you're moving to the right. So it's kind of nice to be able to analyze the functions a piece at a time. I'm going to move on to a, a, a kind of cleaned up slide so I can start talking about the second derivative. Okay, so the second derivative, so here's the problem. And let me just rewrite my first derivative real quick. It was 8t plus 6 over 6t minus 7. And that's dy dx. Well, normally to find the derivative, the second derivative, we just find the derivative of the derivative. So we go and we say, well, all I'm doing is I'm finding the derivative of the derivative. Well, here's the problem. The derivative is a function of t. And we want the derivative with respect to x. Now again, our way around it before was we said, well, if I found the derivative with respect to t and the derivative with respect to t, dy dt divided by dx dt is dy dx. Well, I have to do something similar here. I'm going to have to do a little bit of algebra because I'm trying to find the second derivative, the derivative with respect to x, but what I'm trying to find the derivative of doesn't even have x's in it. Okay, it's a function of t. So here's what I'm, I'm, I have to do. I have to say, well, I'm going to find the derivative of what I had before, but it's got to be with respect to t because t is the variable. Okay. Then I have to, to figure out how I can get what I want, which is the derivative with respect to x. Because, again, I'm doing it with respect to t because t is the variable. Okay, just like back here, I said dy dt, I found the derivative of y with respect to t because t is the variable in y. Same with this, but dy dt divided by dx dt gave me what I wanted. Well, now i got to do a little extra work. I'm, I have to find the derivative of the derivative with respect to t. The way to get the dx that I want, well, I want a dx in the denominator, and I want the dt to be gone, so, I multiply by dt divided by dx. Now take a look at this. Of course, hopefully you see that the dt's will cancel out. And I'll be left with a dx like I want. One of the beauties of Leibniz notation is how you can see and prove some of these things. But here's the issue. We've never seen this before. This is not something we've ever dealt with. Now I'm going to do some algebra that I think is, is a little bit different and not something that people normally think of doing. We normally think of doing the opposite of this. Let me put my work down here. I say, well, I've got the derivative with respect to t of dy dx. I'm multiplying it by dt over dx, but I don't know what dt over dx is. Why don't, instead of multiplying by dt over dx, why don't I divide by dx over 
dt. See in your head here for a second that these are equivalent things. Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. This isn't a move we usually make. Usually we go the other way, but this gives us what we want. So let's find the second derivative according to this. Let me give myself, or let me do that right here. First of all, I just am going to do the top. I'm going to find the derivative of the derivative with respect to t, and hopefully you can see that the derivative will require product rule. We're going to need the first, or I'm sorry, low d high. I'm going to put the 8 out front, so low d high minus high d low. I'm going to put the 6 out front, cross the line, and square the low. And then I have to divide the entire thing by dx dt. But I figured that out. dx dt is just the derivative of x with respect to t. It's just this denominator again. So 6t minus 7. Now, a simple way of doing this, and of course a lot of times they're going to come out exactly the same as you say, well, dividing by 6t minus 7 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 6t minus 7. Well, 6t minus 7 squared in the denominator times another 6t minus 7. Well, that's just 6t minus 7 cubed. And because dx dt is always in the bottom of my quotient rule, and then I have another dx dt, it very often will come out like this. Let me simplify my top here. I've got 48t minus 56 minus 48t minus 36. So let me do a little simplifying. You can see I've crossed out those. Negative 56 minus 36 is negative 92. So I end up with negative 92 in the numerator and 6t minus 7 cubed in the denominator. Now let me go on to kind of a blank slide just so I have a little bit more room to work. So my second derivative was negative 92 over 6t minus 7 cubed. The one point of interest here is that 7 6 because that would make the second derivative undefined. Okay, So if I do a little sign analysis on that because I'm asking about concavity. If I plug in, let's say, a number less than 7, 6, let's say 0. So I have negative 7 cubed, which is negative. Negative over negative is positive. If I plug in a number bigger than 7, 6, I get a positive cubed. Negative divided by positive is negative. So, we had already figured out that 7, 6 was right in here when t was 7, 6. And take a look at it. When t is coming up towards 7, 6, it's moving in this direction. Less than 7, 6, we are definitely concave up. And after 7, 6, we are definitely concave down. So, this is a point of inflection. Uh, we have found where this thing was concave up or down.